At PlayStation Showcase 2021, God of War Ragnarok was revealed. A gameplay trailer for God of War Ragnarok has been released, including both new and old characters. Hello, this is League of Gamers, and if you missed the God of War Ragnarok trailer, or if you did watch it but still want more information, don't worry because we're here to talk about God of War Ragnarok official game details from PlayStation Showcase 2021. But first, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified of every new upload. Last year's PlayStation 5 reveal ended with one major announcement, the revival of the God of War franchise's upcoming installment. Even though it has been referred to as God of War Ragnarok, since then, the game wasn't officially confirmed as such until yesterday night. God of War Ragnarok was part of the PlayStation Showcase 2021, which included a massively outstanding array of games. The game was supposed to come out in 2021, however, it was moved back to 2022, and it was revealed to be a cross-gen title for both the PS4 and PS5. The new trailer, which debuted during the PlayStation Showcase, validates several popular beliefs, the most significant of which is Tyr's presence and the possibility that he is still alive someplace in Midgard. While Cory Barlog will not be returning as game director for the forthcoming game, the company seems to confirm that they are already working on other projects. While there was little to no information about Santa Monica in the weeks preceding up to it, particularly from Cory Barlog, who famously said he had never heard of it, the trailer and a company conversation with Eric Williams and Cory Barlog revealed a lot. While Cory Barlog will not be returning as game director for the future release, Eric Williams will. The company appears to have verified that they are actively working on other titles as well. If you watch the teaser, you'll see that Freya is particularly enraged when she attacks Kratos as he slides through the ice on his sled. This can only suggest that the sandbox will be much broader than the 2018 God of War, as Kratos and Arctuus appear to require a sled to travel about. Not only that, but the game seems to include true civilization, people who aren't attempting to kill Kratos and Arctuus, Loki. In contrast to the harsh, dismal landscape of the previous game in the series, the teaser briefly revealed an almost marketplace-like scene. The trailer also confirmed that Thor, Ryan Hurst, and Odin, Thomas Schiff, teased in the previous game's ending will appear in the sequel. Along with them, newcomers such as Tyr, the Norse god of war, and Angerboa, one of the last living giants, have joined the group. Following the trailer, game director Eric Williams stated that this will be the final installment of God of War's Norse story, and that Ragnarok will, of course, take place in the game. Many of you may be wondering when God of War Ragnarok will be released after seeing that incredible trailer. God of War Ragnarok has yet to be given an official release date. In a PlayStation blog interview in June 2021, head of PlayStation Studios Herman Hulst announced that the game had been postponed until 2022. Hulst added, We decided to push that game out to next year to ensure that Santa Monica Studio can deliver the wonderful God of War game that we all want to experience. While the trailer displayed during the PlayStation event on September 9th did not confirm the 2022 release date, an official blog post recapping the event said, See you next year. Implying the game will be released next year. Santa Monica could have been working on God of War Ragnarok since the reboot's release in 2018. As far back as mid-2019, the developer was seen publishing various job postings, many of which hinted that the business was working on a new God of War game. Game director Cory Barlog discussed in April 2018 Kotaku interview that the God of War writing team had an excess of plot points and story concepts that were not included in the 2018 release. He even stated that the group had enough content for five new games. He then clarified on Twitter that he was exaggerating, but he promised followers that the relaunch would be followed up just days later. In 2019, Barlog seemed to start hinting at God of War Ragnarok. Ragnarok is coming, the writer wrote in a Twitter thread. By combining the first letters of each tweet in the line, the sentence can be obtained. Barlog was concealing it right in front of our eyes. Would you like to hear about what we know so far about the upcoming plot of the God of War Ragnarok story? Hello there, mates! Before we offer our thoughts on the God of War Ragnarok story, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. So, here are our story ideas for the forthcoming voyage. Kratos and Artarius arrive in Jotunheim after slaying Baldor to spread the ashes of Arctuus' mother, Fae. They learn that Fae was a giant named Lofi, transforming Arctuus into a half-god and half-giant. We also discover that he has a different name, 
Loki. As the father and son make their way back home, Arduous grills his father with questions regarding his true identity and his mother's inheritance. It appears that, for better or worse, watching Arduous learn more of his Loki side will be a prominent feature of the upcoming game. Baldur's death may have hinted at Kratos' next significant hurdle in God of War Ragnarok. The Cataclysm Catastrophe, also known as the Twilight of the Gods, is a Norse mythological prophecy that predicts the death of many gods. While the series is known for its loose interpretations of mythology, Baldur's death invariably sets off Ragnarok in most saga versions. Furthermore, a secret cutscene near the end of the game depicts Thor meeting Kratos at his home, implying that a god of war is on the horizon. Here's what we learned from the trailer and event on September 9th. Since Artreus is an adolescent, there is a time jump of a few years. Artreus' lineage is a significant story point and source of tension with his father. Freya reappears as a villain. Thor is also a villain. The game includes all nine Norse realms. In a post-show interview, the designers said the game would conclude the series Norse Saga. Another thing that comes to thoughts is whether or not God of War Ragnarok is a PS5 exclusive. The series' fifth installment will be a cross-generational title. Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, and the upcoming God of War will all be available on PS4 and PS5. Herman Hulse confirmed this in a June 2021 interview with the PlayStation blog, where it makes sense to build a title for both PS4 and PS5 for Horizon Forbidden West, the next God of War, GT7, Hulse stated, and PS4 owners who wish to play that game can do so. If they choose to play the PS5 version, it will be available to them. Do you think God of War's Norse Saga will come to an end with Ragnarok? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Well, if you're going to ask us, God of War Ragnarok's debut at Sony's recent PS5 event was well received, but it didn't provide much new information beyond this very much looks like a sequel to God of War, which was all anyone wanted to see. However, one detail that stood out was the announcement that Ragnarok would be the end of God of War's Norse mythology, bringing Kratos and Arduous' story to a close after only two games. It's a far cry from the original Greek mythology-based God of War series, in which Kratos slaughtered gods and titans across three primary games and various side quests. Still, his voyage into the Norse realm would end after only encountering a few Norse stories. In a recent interview, Cory Barlog revealed why this was the case saying that the core of the story is about Kratos and Arduous, and they felt like they could wrap up the story in two games without stretching the story form ripples in a pond to an entire ocean. This illustrates how much game production has progressed in terms of budget and time invested. The first God of War was released in 2005. God of War 2, 3, Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, and Ascension were all released in 2013. Rather than removing a new God of War sequel or spin-off every two to three years, Sony Santa Monica is investing heavily in just two core games over the next 10 years and ending the tale there before moving on. The series' nature has evolved and the game's development and ambitions have changed as well. Of course, this does not imply that God of War will be discontinued. It's easily one of PlayStation's most valuable IPs, especially after the reboot's positive reception. A step ahead could mean Kratos going on to a new group of gods, or it could be something no one foresees. But in the end, I don't think fans need three complete sequels and three spin-offs to explore Norse Kratos thoroughly. And this feels like the appropriate decision being made here, even if sagas rarely end in less than a trilogy. That concludes today's video. We hope it has helped you better understand and anticipate the release of God of War Ragnarok. If you're looking for more gaming content, check out our previous uploads and subscribe and switch on notifications to get notified of new uploads. League of Gamers here, and we'll see you in the following video.